I wanted to share some outdoor transformations that you could do with your front entryway. I thought it would be nice to really brighten up the space and I also have a few things within the landscape that need some replacing. So I picked up a Japanese maple tree, which is actually low maintenance and I absolutely love the colors when they're in bloom. There's some basic landscaping to this house, but the tree that's in the front was already passed on when we moved in, as well as what was remaining in the pots that are also around the property. So I'm also thinking maybe I could upcycle that as well. But the first thing I'll have to do is remove the tree. I wanted to make a dramatic change and I have a lot of space and some dead space that I think we could be using a lot better. I've removed plants and other things in gardens, but never a tree. So I'm gonna use a basic hacksaw and a shovel, and I'm gonna to have to cut this down piece by piece. And because it's so dried out, it's actually quite prickly. But it's not even just a case of cutting it down. I'm actually gonna to have to take out the whole bulb and roots out of this tree, and I think that's gonna take a few minutes. So I had to do a quite a bit of digging and the big thing is is actually ripping out the roots from the sides in order to get the bulb out. So I just kept working from side to side and dig and dig and as I got closer and closer and I just kept going around and around I finally got loose of the bulb of the tree and finally got it out. There were some really nice leftover ceramic pots that I think I could upcycle as well. So I went to the Home Depot and I got myself eight bags of the mulch for the garden. And I also picked up a couple of other things that I thought might be helpful to plant into the front. For planting a new tree, it was really important to make sure that your hole is double the size in both depth and width based on the already size of the plant that you're going to plant in there. I also added in some fresh soil as well. As I mentioned, I love the Japanese maple. They do come in the green, but I really thought the vibrant red would be really, really beautiful for right at the side of the house. There is a full irrigation system with the property and I yet to actually know how it works. So that's also on my agenda of things to do. Now, because of the climate that we live here on Vancouver Island, you do want to try to pick things that do well in full sun. So both the Japanese maple and as well as this ornamental grass, which we already have on the property, do really well in the summer climate and actually survive our winters. This ornamental grass is really beautiful for gardens and it's really easy to maintain and it's really low maintenance. And depending on the directions in which your gardens are, it's just really important to make sure whether it has partial or full sun that the plant or plants or trees that you're planting. Most garden centers are really helpful for things like that. And because I have full sun in this direction of the house all day long, it was really important that they, what I was going to plant could maintain with a lot of sunlight. I got these Andirondack chairs from Home Depot and I absolutely fell in love with these ones because they're actually not wood. These are recycled plastic and high density polyurethane and they're UV resistant all the way through which prevents fading and scuffs as well as upkeep. Full instructions as well as tools required but based on my experience these tools weren't as helpful as I thought. The first chair took me over an hour because I was trying to use the original tools that they told me to, and it was pretty useless. So I decided to take matters into my own hands, and based on what I saw with these kind of screws going into this heavy, heavy plastic, I was gonna need a power drill. Once I had that going, these got put together super quickly. So speeding up the time, I was able to finish the first chair in 10 minutes, and then by the time I got to the second chair, it only took 20 minutes, so it went really quickly. But because at the side of the house gets full sun all the time, this is gonna be perfect because then it's gonna resist fading and scuffing, and they're super easy to maintain and clean. There was no way I was gonna be able to put in a screw manually without using a power drill for this. 
But for the space I want to put these in, it's perfect because it's very usable space and now we have the perfect lounger chairs. Now because of the already scheme going on with the house, I picked out a few of the natural grays that I could find, but I wanted something that was super light. I didn't want white, I just really wanted something that was a very neutral gray, but a lot brighter. So I went back to Home Depot and I just picked up a basic foam roller set and there's two of them for an ultra smooth finish. Also just gonna apply a little bit of aluminum foil inside the tray so I can reuse it. I'm gonna use the Bare Ultra Paint and Primer and this is for the exterior and they do custom color mix right at Home Depot. So I chose the color Silver Feather. And first thing you're gonna wanna do before you do your front door is definitely give it a really good wash. So I'm just using dish soap and I'm just gonna clean it really, really well including the frame. You definitely want a really good high quality painter's tape when you're wanting to do a professional job, especially for an exterior. This way you're not going to have anything leak underneath your paint, so I've learned from the past you don't want the cheaper paint tape. Once everything's cleaned really well and everything's taped up, then you're ready to go. If you have any indentations on your door frame, my first recommendation is to make sure that you paint that with a fine synthetic brush first. And that's what I'm gonna do. This is a very modern door, but I do have some very tiny indentations that I'm gonna paint first because the roller may not grab those indentations. To get a really beautiful, smooth, professional finish, the number one rule is don't put too much paint on your paintbrush and or on your roller. You want to work in thin layers. So what I did first is all the indentations I made sure to cover with my paintbrush. Then I went around and actually did all of around the frames. This was important to do because the roller may not grab up to the edges. So I made sure to put two coats on everything that I did with the paintbrush first, then I started in with the roller. This is a super light, fast, easy way to make a dramatic effect to your front entryway is just paint. Any type of paint and primer is going to dry really fast on a brush if you leave it even just for a half an hour. So it's really important to put it into a baggie in case you need to use it again. So I'm going to put on my first coat. It's going to be very thin and it's going to have a lot of lines into it. But by the time I get into my second and my third coat, it will definitely all come together. If you're going from an opposite end of color tone to another, you're definitely gonna want at least three coats. So here I'm doing from a very dark, dark gray to a very light gray. So definitely three coats. And if you're doing it in reverse, the same will apply. Now these foam brushes can wear down very quickly. So what I recommend is to make sure you have two. And because the first one I'm using, I can actually already start to see that it's pilling a little bit. I'm going to put a brand new one on before I put my third coat on and this is just going to make sure I have a nice smooth finish. I think all in all, considering all the color choices that go on all around the perimeter of the house, this was a really good cohesive match. I figured I could upcycle these already remaining pots, so I went down to my local nursery and I was able to get a few things off for 50% off because we're not at the beginning of the season anymore. And again, because I get full sun on the front of the house all day long, it was really important that I pick things that could actually really do well in full sun. 
So again, these were left when we bought the house and I'm gonna use the spray paint in bare premium in the black and it's gonna actually be in the satin finish. So I took everything out that was already remaining in the pots and I got some fresh soil. The pots didn't really match for anything that I wanted to do, so I figure I could make things a little bit more monochromatic. But what I didn't understand is why they didn't get the sticker off the pot. So I'm going to scrape that off just using a scouring pad and some dish soap, and then I'm going to clean all the pots really well before I apply my spray paint. This particular spray paint, again, is a paint and primer, and what's really great about it, it does stick to wood, it sticks to plastic, it sticks to glass as well as ceramic. So when I saw these Delias, which are full sun, I thought these would be perfect for up front, and it's also going to add some beautiful color tones. Spray painting is a quick and easy way just to update anything you want to upcycle. Anytime that you're spray painting, it's just really important to use small little bursts of paint, light little sprays at a time and let it overlap. And you should come out with a beautiful finish. Because it's quite warm outside, it should take less than an hour to be completely dry. I was really impressed with this product because it only took one coat to get such a beautiful coverage. I really like to use the liquid plant food for anything that's in pots, both interior and exterior. This is just something that you could add in once in a while to your plants and this will just really help them blossom. This is really good to do for freshly potted plants. From the ornamental grass to the fresh mulch, the new maple tree, as well as the fresh upcycled pots and the freshly painted front door, I think it made a really good impact. Being able to use the space more effectively with the new chairs, I think it was a really, really good choice. Always amazes me with just a few changes what an impact it can make. 